Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our virtual Monday Thursday worship. Uh, with nightfall, our Lenten observance comes to an end, and we gather as Christians around the world to celebrate the great three days, also called the Triduum. We begin this observance tonight on Monday Thursday. Monday Thursday is the day we remember that Jesus and his disciples gathered privately in an upper room to celebrate the Passover. I want to remind you tonight that uh, you should have uh, wine and bread in your homes close by so that when it comes time to bless and uh, consecrate those elements that you will have them in front of you and you will be able to do that with me. Um, Tomorrow evening, we will worship again, and uh, we invite you to participate virtually as well. Uh, it'll be a profound, uh, abbreviated version of what we normally do, but I hope you are blessed. And then Easter Sunday morning, uh, you will be able to worship virtually, and it should be up and running by about 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. I pray uh, God's deep blessing on these three days before we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, and I am grateful for your patience and your loving participation. Let's take a minute to quiet our hearts before we begin. This is an invitation to begin the three holy days, the Triduum. You knew, Jesus, that your hour had come. You knew your betrayer. You knew your enemies. You knew that even those who professed to love you would abandon you. Yet you loved unto the end. Thank you for loving us even unto death. Teach us to love like you love. Teach, Teach us, us to, to love, love each, each other, other, including our enemies. You took on the form of a servant, washing the feet of those whom you disciple. You defined humility and servanthood. You are the one surely sent from God. Thank, Thank you, you for serving us. us. Teach, Teach us to be servants, servants without fail, to, to make humility our constant companion, companion and, and to, to seek, seek no glory for ourselves. On this solemn evening, you surrounded yourself with friends and an enemy, persons of faith and a person of ill will. On, On this, this holy night, you established a new commandment. Help, help us to live, live it in every moment and aspect of our lives when we are with our families in this church in, in the, the community, community in which, which we live and work, and, and finally throughout, throughout the world. world. On this most gracious night, we gather to remember again the miracle of your love and grace. You have gathered us into your marvelous light. At, At great cost to you, you have given, given us new life. And, and as we will see once again tomorrow, you, you bought for us, with, with your own life, eternal life. May, May this holy Thursday worship, honor your living, dying, and rising again. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment on our hearts, O God, and give us the will to serve others as Jesus did with him who was servant of all and with you and the Holy Spirit we give thanks and praise to God this night. Amen. The Old Testament story of the Passover. The 
from Exodus 12, verses 1 through 4 and 11 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I shall pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Most of you are parents, parents who have brought life into the world. If you have not, then I think instead you can relate to the opening of this sermon from the perspective of being given life by your own parents. I know that parents don't do things for their children expecting a reward, but on occasion you must wonder if your kids realize the sacrifices you've made in order to provide them with everything necessary to thrive and to live. The question, do you know what I have done for you, must cross your minds occasionally, maybe even often. I have observed parents in this congregation providing for their children by giving them every opportunity to be successful, by offering them a chance to play sports, by, playing, by paying for a musical instrument and providing them with private instruction by finding them the best voice lesson teacher possible, or taking them to places that will enhance their understanding of the world. And to do all of this, you have had to sacrifice, foregoing creature comforts for the sake of your children. And sometimes, maybe even more often than you'd like to admit, your children are not necessarily aware of the sacrifices that you've made. You are unselfish, and that is worth noting and honoring. Do you know what I've done for you? It's a question God could have posed again and again throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. On this night, we are reminded from the text just read of what God did for the Hebrews. They were enslaved in Egypt, and they suffered under the cruelty of the Pharaoh, God set them free. They were thirsty and hungry in the wilderness. God gave them water to drink, and God gave them food to eat. They worshipped other gods. God gave them the law by which they could live together in peace. They were lost and again enslaved by the Babylonians. God sent prophets to proclaim a way home. God did all of this out of God's great love for them, God's great and endless love. Then God sent Jesus. Paul tells us about this gift in the second chapter of his letter to the people of Philippi. Eugene Peterson's version of this text from the message is so powerful. This is how he puts it. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, Paul says, then do me a favor. 
agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way out to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Then he writes, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status, no matter what, not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. And having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life. And then he died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death of, at that, a crucifixion. Tonight, Jesus takes the role of a slave. He humbles himself completely. When we proclaim to have a share with Jesus and respond to his cleansing death, we constitute a community where such a reversal of roles is the norm and not the exception. As Jeremy Taylor wrote some 350 years ago of Jesus, he, wrote, he writes this, and he chose to wash their feet rather than their head, that he might have the opportunity of a more humble position and a more apt signification of his charity. Thus God lays everything aside that he may serve his servants. Heaven stoops to earth and one abyss calls upon another and the miseries of humanity which were next to infinite are excelled by a mercy equal to the immensity of God. Do you know what I've done for you? William Brosend in his commentary suggests that that's a question for tonight, for tomorrow night, and for Saturday too. It's a question absolutely for every day. The saving work of Christ, what Jesus has done and does for us always, is not just about the cross. What Jesus has done is about the birth and the baptism the teaching and the healing, the body and the blood, the basin and the towel, the life and the death. We are so blessed when we follow Jesus' example. Even if the world tells us that kneeling at someone's feet, washing someone's feet, serving them, sacrificing for them is weakness and vulnerability. But that's the mandatum, the mandate, for this Monday Thursday. Even if we are betrayed, like Jesus was by his own disciple Judas, even if the world tells us to take care of ourselves before we take care of others, we are above all else to love. Love your enemies, Jesus says, and bless those, bless those who curse you. Do you know what I've done for you? God in Christ has given us an example to emulate and a way to be in love with each other. As parents, children, parishioner, pastor, and friends, selfless servanthood is what we're all called to live. Broson continues tonight. Powerful feelings are set loose in the church, even in this empty church. Feelings of sorrow and loss, regret, even fear in all likelihood. But also, the powerful feelings set loose by Jesus. Commitment, conviction, and all-out determination. God, as Jeremy Taylor reminds us, lays everything aside tonight. So my brothers and sisters, 
it might not be a bad idea for us to reflect on what we in turn might set aside and what we might lift up. Do you know what I have done for you, Jesus asks? If we do understand, then we can take to heart his final command. Go and do likewise. Amen. Our confession for this evening is uh, on the same page as the Old Testament story of the Passover. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle, our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the crucified, God never wearies of being merciful, forgiving our sins and giving us deep peace. On this night, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor and enter the Passover celebration at peace. I invite you to sing with us. Take, oh, take me as I am. out what I shall be. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Gracious God, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the, For the sake, sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Go, take me as I am. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Church of Christ, by Christ's own authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. I invite you to take the bread and hold it in your loving hands. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, by sa and saying to his disciples, Take, this is my body. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is my blood. The blood of the new covenant will be shed for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine 
until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Please pray as I have taught you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, never and ever. Amen. Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation, receive from his nail scarred hand eat of the bread of salvation drink of the blood of the lamb before you share communion i invite you to pray the prayer that is listed in your bulletin and then I invite you uh, to share communion with one another at home. The gifts of God for the children of God. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table. took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not know what I am doing. But later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. Do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen each one of us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. I invite you to remember your Monday Thursday offering, uh, either online or in person or in the mail with Bless This Church and keep her doors open. Peggy. Each petition of tonight's prayers will end with, Lord, in your mercy, to which you will respond. Hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
holy God, source of all love. On this night, the night of Jesus' betrayal, he gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment on our hearts. Give us the will to love even our enemies the way that Jesus so tenderly loved all. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Forgive us for how frequently we look to be served rather than seek places to serve others. Forgive us for how often we seek to be blessed rather than become a blessing for those in need. In your mercy and by your grace, shape us into a servant people who seek your will and who live your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the blessing of life won for us on the cross at Calvary. Shape us to be the cross of Christ for the world. Make us, by your Spirit's power, a most faithful people, always ready to respond to your call to live for the sake of the needy, the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed in every land. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. On this night, Almighty God, as we worship virtually with our brothers and sisters throughout the U.S., plunge us into the meaning of Christ's sacrifice for us and teach us through his example to be willing to sacrifice who we are for who we might become. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Now into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. A litany of promise on the next page. The cross, we shall shall take take it. it. The bread, we shall break it. The pain, we shall bear. The joy, we shall share it. The gospel, we shall live it. The love, we we shall shall give give it. it. The light, we shall cherish it. The darkness, God shall shall perish it. it. Amen. Amen. 